Can we talk? Talk, 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 talk. It is I, Hope Giselle, Hope Disguise, and I'm coming at you all today with another episode of Can We Talk Podcast. Now, if you are watching this on either YouTube or Patreon, you are lucky because I have some amazingly beautiful and handsome men all up and around me in all of these squares. But if you are just listening to it because you're on your way to work or you like to listen to me while you're working out or whatever the case you might be doing, then I, I'm, I'm going to please just go watch it because you don't, when, when you turn your camera on, sister, brother, sibling, you're going to be like, damn, because they're, they're just that gorgeous, right? Um, but outside of that, I wanted to come and have a conversation today with some amazing men about a topic that I think we cover, but we don't cover in depth. And that is about trans women, the men that love us and their actual experiences. I wanted to talk a little bit less about the ideas of sex and why, you know, men uh, go after trans women for that particular reason. And a little bit more about the ways in which their masculinity is affected, how they live their lives, how that attraction kind of uh, transforms the way that they maneuver themselves as men and if sex comes up then we will discuss it but this would not be a conversation which its intention is to be about talking about sex so if that's what you want to hear this is not the conversation for you okay um but without further ado i just want to ask you all the million dollar question which is can we talk hell yeah Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, testosterone. I've never had this much testosterone. <laughs> All right. So uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you all. I know that uh, you all introduced yourself a little bit earlier off camera, but just for the people, uh, could you give us all a little short synopsis of who you are, starting with Mr. Jamie? Hey, uh, good evening, family. Jamie Riley. I live here in D.C. Uh, I work in nonprofit and anti-poverty work. And I do racial equity, kind of inclusion, community building, organizing here in DC. Happy to be here with y'all tonight. All right, who wants to go next? Jump in, popcorn, fellas. This ain't time to get scared. Chris, what's your big <laughs> All right, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, uh, what's up? I'm Chris. Um, I have a podcast called Trans Talk for Men. Um, I've been a content creator for a year and a half. Uh, been a journalist for, ooh. About 13 years now, so I've uh, been well versed in the, in the media world and, uh, you know, just ready to have this awesome conversation. All righty. Hey, yo, uh, my name is Lex, uh, Lex Newman. I'm from Detroit. Um, I actually lived in Asia for about seven years, but I'm back in America now. Um, I am an artist, so that means I'm a photographer. Um, I have a global awareness project for trans women as well called Femininity. But I play piano and I dance, so um, you can find me on YouTube and stuff and all of that. But I'm excited for today. Thank you for having me. So what's, what's up, guys? What's up, folks? Everybody, <laughs> I'm Louie. I'm an artist. I'm from Baltimore, and, and I'm currently in LA. And I'm just here, present, ready to have this dialogue. Peace, family. I am Alfonso. I go by Downfonso when I perform. I'm an artist, performer, producer, as well as business owner and um, activist, and just an overall you know, human. All righty. So guys, I wanted to come and, and really bring this conversation to the forefront because I've been having a multitude of conversations around a multitude of things. And I think I actually want to start with something that kind of just deep dives into uh, the meat of the conversation. I know that you all have probably maybe everybody on here has at least seen one time or heard about consciously's videos have has everybody seen the consciously videos that have been floating around where he's like avidly Mm -hmm. talking about yeah okay so Mm -hmm. as i recently interviewed uh consciously and because he is married the question came up about whether or not he was actually trans amorous himself and he could not answer the question because his wife was not having that. And he was very vocal about it. You know, he was just like, look, my wife ain't having that. So I'm not going to answer the question. And he verbally said, like, I'm copping a plea on this one. I, I, I know that it's going to seem screwed up, um, but I'm copping a plea on this. But I do think that regardless of his actual attraction himself, that the content was spot on. And he brought it in this very... I don't know, like he bought it in this very forthright way that seemed to be very authentic to who he was. But I just wanted to know how you all felt about someone who probably 
for, for lack of a better word, looking at his image, right? When we see the person who probably is not a trans amorous man um, making these statements and kind of sort of putting them out there and getting all of this like praise for doing this thing that honestly men should be doing regardless. Um, how did you feel when you first saw those videos or how do you feel when you see his opinions being so elevated by trans women? Um, and anybody, you feel free to take the reins on that one. Um, I first saw it on Twitter uh, and I was, it, I don't even know what video it was, but I think it was like a TikTok. Um, and the way that I, got what I got from it was that here was this this person uh, who very may very well may not be a part of the group that he's speaking up for or he may be but for all intents and purposes of denying or not you know speaking up I'm just going to default to no um speaking up for a group of people that it doesn't belong to and then on the flip side there are audiences and then I'm not even just talking about trans women specifically but from my Twitter it seemed like everybody was more or less gassing this person up which is is polarizing because obviously the message itself you want to be out there but at the same time it's kind of like from, from me viewing an audience it's kind of like one of those situations where I'm annoyed because here you are elevating the person that isn't even, it's akin to uh, like light-skinned people talking about like dark-skinned uh, experiences or, or non-queer people, <laughs> huh? I say like Beyonce and brown skin girl, but I'm sorry, I didn't want to. <laughs> but yes. Call a thing a thing, <laughs> call a thing a thing. But but it is beautiful because yes the message yes absolutely we you know we 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 want to hear this message and it's an important message and this is definitely something that should be in the community this message but at the same time uh i i kind of turn the mirror to the community itself and and, and kind of ask a question like why are we choosing these particular people over these particular people to kind of um put these messages out there because they're and it's just mixed because I know that when people, it's a, like a palatable thing. It's a, it's a privileged thing. It's a, it's a, it's all types of stuff, but that my initial response was annoyed. I didn't quite um, have like as much of a positive response. I was just like, Oh, cool. But like, also, you know, so yeah. this is very polarized, a polarized experience for me. I actually, um, I applauded it to be honest with you. And I think part of it was, I think a lot of times to see, so I think a lot of it is about imagery. And I think the imagery or assumption of what he represents or at least his right. ideology, the lack thereof, this need for a deep intellect thought, but just really just simple, basic human rights that, that I think most, a lot of maybe cisgender men can connect to that don't have the language or aren't part of the movement or aren't part of the like, I appreciated the fact that he, in some sense, his work has normalized these conversations in some ways that I think, you know, that I think I sometimes can't because I speak from, a, sometimes I'm really, I'm way too kind of philosophical and theoretical. And I think when he talked Israel, like, look, this is the shit, this is what it is. This is where it's fucked up. This is where y'all can do better. And I appreciated it being brought down to a message that I think I could actually go to some younger family members or folks in my community or my cousins and actually talk about the topic because he presented it in a way that I thought was like to your point was kind of digestible and palatable which I think is important in any movement in some sense. So that was kind of my, my, and I've been following him since then. Like I've been kind of just looking to see how he navigates and how he moves um, and hearing people's comments about his work too. I agree and I resonate with that so strongly, Jamie. It, it makes me, because in a lot of ways I'm kind of that same like person, really bookworm, philosophical, I'll give you kind of the theoretical, but what does it look like in praxis? And for me, it, it comes to a point where you have to be accountable to what it is that you say, what it is that you do. And it gets to that point of, okay, now the rubber has to meet the road, but what's it going to be? You know, consciously or whoever else may ever be in that seat. And at that point, you have to say, okay, I'm either like really with it and I'm going to own up to it and kind of be responsible for that, be held to that, or I'm going to kind of flounder in a way. And not to knock like him and his relationship, like I don't know any like, of those particular details, but for me, if you, like to be that advocate, you also have to be accountable to that. And 
saying that, yes, this is what it is for me personally. And I can stand up to that regardless of, you know, who it is that I'm with, who I'm married to, X, Y, Z. I, can I jump in? I don't know. I don't, it, with, see, when you said the word advocate, I immediately, I, yes, I completely agree with that. Um, and I also, I also agree with the point of uh, a person getting to a crossroads and having to decide whether or not they're going to follow through with it and follow suit. But this other word of allyship pops up in my head constantly when we, we discuss things like this. Allyship to me looks like in those moments when you're in the hot seat, I guess, sticking up and using your privilege to make way for the, the disenfranchised or the marginalized group that you're talking about. And it's one thing to be like a public figure and to be an advocate and to talk about these things. But then when, to me, it, it's, again, it's polarizing because when you are at that at a crossroads and you fail to show up as an ally, that's to me more damaging than if you were to not do anything at all almost because it proved in my head, I don't know, in my head, it kind of proves like the point, but also at the same time, like the message is out there, but also the message has always been out there from people who've been in the community and it's always been palatable. It's just that people aren't accepting the message from certain people, people who are who don't uh, appear cis straight. You know, it's, it's, it's just a weird thing. I don't know. So it's like advocacy, allyship, it's like he gave, he gave a little, to me, he gave like a little bit of Tupac vibe to the conversation. Like, if I'm gonna be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, there was like, a, oh shit, like he feels this way. Like, I wouldn't expect a guy who looks like him that pronunciates like him. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree, but I think it, you know, I, I agree with you on the ally piece, but I also think there's a space and a circle of folks who've been having this conversation for a long time out you know, who've been advocates or who've been in community with our sisters at the same time. But I also think, you know, it's kind of the same conversation sometimes Black folks have about white folks' role in the racial justice movement. It's like, can we really tackle, can we tackle racism without white people? And some would argue, no, because racism is their issue. And so in some sense, the, the, the homophobic or the genderized or oppressed feelings that a lot of cisgender men have has to be presented in a way that the masses can digest it sometimes. I think that's what he, he's been doing. He's been making it a dialogue that is not for that other people. Yeah. But yeah. Has it hasn't been digested by the masses. And all I, I mean, the, oh. the people that I know, everybody I've seen on Facebook sharing it, it's been mostly black trans women, which right. not a knock on them at all for just, you know, you know, prepping this guy up and getting this message out there. I think, um, you know, they can do, I, I think it's great that the women share messages as much as possible, positive messages. But um, I don't have, I'm, as a content creator, as somebody who's actually, you know, been doing this for a minute, trying to spread the uh, good word out here, um, I don't have a problem with him in terms of, you know, what he's doing. Doesn't bug me at all because I think there's plenty of space. There's really only a handful of guys out there actually putting themselves out there on mass media talking about trans amory, talking about trans rights, trans, like get, trying to get un, people to understand. And, um, you know, there's only a few of us out here. So, I mean, there's plenty of, there's plenty of internet for everybody. So I don't, I don't feel threatened at all. I don't feel like, well, we, why is it taking up bus bridges? Like, I ain't, I ain't on that. I ain't getting petty. I would love to have them on my show. I'd love to rap with the dude myself, but you know, I think there's plenty of room and, and, you know, maybe Les can talk a little bit more about that because he's also a content creator. He, those videos just like that, that get out there, the ladies love them. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you know, I mean, I really enjoy, I enjoy what he's doing. You know, he's super, he's hyper extroverted. You know, he's out here really making videos, three, four, five videos a day about all kinds of different stuff. So, you know, I got nothing but love for the guy. He's really trying to do everything he can and create a brand for himself. And it's super dope that he's touching on a lot of different social issues. So, you know, it, it would be weird to tell him that he can't touch on that because he did he did reach a bunch of people that otherwise were not really being a part of the conversation. And the way that he did it, I feel like a lot of people enjoy the way that he says it because he says it in a way to where he doesn't give a fuck. But the only thing about that is he really doesn't have to. I feel like everybody here, I've heard a version of 
oh, I'm very cerebral or I'm very philosophical or I'm very like this and that. We're all artists here. And I can't speak for y'all because we haven't talked about that yet. But I feel like all of us here have some varying degree of actual love to where we would actually date with trans women. So when we approach that conversation, it's a little bit bit more caution. It's a little bit more like, okay, how can we, how can we do this in a way that, that makes sense to people? Whereas if you don't really have a dog in that fight, you can kind of just be like, Hey, yo, this is what it is. I don't give a fuck. And kind of just move on. You can kind of just kind of say it in a way that is, um, I don't know. You don't, you don't really have to think about it in any kind of way. And he can approach it in a way that's very forward. And I think that that's super dope because a lot of people reacted to that. But the thing about that is it's super polarizing. So the people, just like Chris said, the people who like that, the people who are on that side, the people who are down for trans rights, be like thousand percent. I love it. Let's go for it. But the people who are on the fence or who are not a hundred percent on that side do the exact opposite where they're like, okay, fuck what you talk about. Fuck you. And you know, I feel like because we actually care about this conversation, when we come to talk about it, we try to find a way that does not make people also say, fuck you, while saying, oh yeah, we we like what you're saying. So I don't know. I mean, I can't knock the brother at all. Um, but you know, you all made interesting points about the fact that I think it's really easy to champion him because he's he's not attracted to trans people. I think it's really easy for trans people to look at that and be like, oh wow, he's a real man. That's a real man right there. That's a real nigga saying that shit. Uh, and you know, it's on. it's dope. Like, yeah, it's real trade saying that shit. And it's right, like, exactly. that's cool. And that's what um, but does he is he really gonna ride at the end of the day? And I, I don't think it has to be a matter of that, but it is an interesting question to throw in there, you know. And I did watch the live with Hope where he kind of very much retracted away from from that conversation right. ever c- turning into a thing. But he's married and I've been married and I know how that feels. You know, he's trying to keep the peace in his home and I ain't knocking the brother at all for that. And I still would love to talk to him, but it's just a matter of, I would love to see um, people championing all guys who talk about any of these kinds of conversations in, the, in a similar kind of way. Um, I would love to see people just giving those cookies to anybody who really wants to put that work into trying to create some change because um there needs to be more than just one kind of person now i can't sit up there and say that i haven't got a bunch of love too i got sixty thousand followers or sixty thousand uh shares on, on twitter as well so you know it's not no competition Give me some of them, it's just a matter of <laughs> everybody <laughs> everybody needs to get that love. send me some of them brother <laughs> you know that's that's another thing about uh, black trans women like black trans women will fucking support like yeah, I, I, I love it. I love it so much, and it just drives me to keep uh, inventing new content and better content. It's just, just the support has, has really made a world of difference, and okay. it hasn't been a lot of hate, a lot of distrust. None, I haven't gotten any of that really from Black Trans. They, they're they're happy now. I've gotten critiques, but it's all in love, and, and they're they're trying to help me out. Here. So I, I take that, and we're cool. So it's it, but I, I appreciate the love. Appreciate the love and support. And when they see us out here talking, doing our thing, they spread it out to the masses. And I, I got to give my shout outs. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel like I feel like as creatives, at the very least, uh, we have this kind of responsibility to kind of inform in ways that are that are uh, digestible. Um, but at the same time, on the flip on the flip side of being artists or creatives or however you may identify, um, there's a level of accountability that we must hold ourselves to and each other. So as as uh, trans amorous men, when we see content like that, uh, yes, we are of course we should uplift one another. And if there's anything that we feel might be um, that can improve in the art or the creation, then we have discussions like this and we talk to the person that's creating it. Um, But in terms of like what we feel about, you know, the the, the impact of it all is less important than understanding how uh, uh, trans women are, uh, how they feel about it because we can't speak about how how hurt they are or how uplifted they are. They can only speak for themselves. Um, So yeah, just, hold each other accountable and also give space and listen to the people that it's actually about. Because if it, if it continues to be this thing where like we're uplifting, 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 where it's like this, there's someone, at least one person from the community that this content is for saying like, well, actually, you know, 
yeah, then we is our responsibility more or less to hold ourselves accountable to do a better job just because that's the nature of what being an artist and a creative is, is to do better and to, and to uh, serve better. So nice little balance. Yeah. You know, one thing I appreciate about, you know, I think that just, to, I don't know if we can continue to talk about consciously, but I'll just tell you my perspective. And it's, and it's really a kind of a battle that I've, something I've appreciated about him is I felt like the bravery, and I'm not, I can't say that I'm 100% there yet. So that's why I kind of bring it up. But I think the bravery to be able to risk ridicule for your beliefs, particularly in the way that he presents himself, is inspirational. I think there are other guys who maybe, who need, um, who need that. You know, again, like I talked about when, you know, I introduced myself before we start recording, um, you know, I, I was raised in a military household. I was raised in a, this is what a man is. This is what a man is not. And I have had to spend, I'm 38 at this point. I've had to spend my entire life trying to break through that process, break through where I have voice and feelings and where I've not been able or, or not been able to, um, where I've been, where I've stifled myself because of judgment or fear of ridicule or fear of particularly when I've decided in my life to follow very cisgendered male performing sports, fraternities, social orgs, you know, all of these things that define black maleness. And what I liked about Conscious Lee is I felt like he was willing to say the things that in a way, whatever the risk was, and maybe for him there wasn't a risk because, you know, he's just speaking about an issue. It's not about his lived experience. But even for me at 39 years, it was like, okay, like, his work made me comfortable when Hope reached out to say, would you be part of this conversation? I've never talked really publicly about my, my identities, my feelings, my, my attractions. I've never, you know, this is not a thing. That's not something, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not a creative. I've, I've worked at a higher ed faculty. I've been a, a faculty on a college campus and now I'm doing nonprofit for 15 years. So I've been kind of a tight, light, tight, you know, tight laced guy. I've not really been in the creative space. And so, I appreciated it consciously because I think it it pushed me to start having these conversations in a way. If he can do it, he got a whole, he got a wife and a family and all these other things. Then let me get out there and kind of make my voice more bold in a way that I've not been doing it before. So um, not trying to lift him up more, but I I will say that then. No, lift that brother up. Let him let him have that because that's dope. I, I love I love to hear I love to hear that because I hear a lot of guys. I showed it to a lot of guys, and they actually were very like. Like, what the fuck is this? Because he said it in a way that was very like, you know, but he, he is a debater and his whole his right. skill is really like taking on a subject. And if you're on a debate team, it really doesn't matter if you agree with something or not. It's about taking on an issue and playing either the opposition or the, you know, the whatever. So he's, he's good at doing a debate. And uh, I really I really appreciate the fact that it was appreciated so much. Um, yeah. I really don't give a fuck who's saying it. If I'm saying it, if, if, if Chris is saying it, if we say it as somebody here, if he's saying it, whoever is saying it, as long as that shit is reverberating out into the world and it's actually making some kind of positive change. And, and seeing you say that right there, Jamie, that's, that, that, really, that really made me feel good about that. You know, I, I might send him another message. I sent him about four <laughs> I sent you about four messages. My guy, I wanted to speak with you. But um, yeah, you know, um, that really is dope. You know, if, if it's creating some positivity in the world, please do more. Now, um, the one thing about this that is, uh, I guess it's just, you know, having the guys from outside the community do this kind of stuff. Um, I just wonder if he would have went through if Wifey was like, you know what, I'm not down with none of that trans shit. Fuck no. You know, that I guess the reaction from cis women is something that us as, you know, black, black trans and rich men have to deal with. Well, no, I was, uh, I'm just thinking quite a I was uh I was really talking about permission to make the video that got shared a bunch. You know, if, if she wasn't down with him saying, you know what, I'm 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 not cool with you supporting all this. Like fuck it, this now you gay, whatever. Like throw whatever at him. Then you know, uh, I I mean I, I just I just don't know if we really still go ahead and do the video without the support of this girl or dealing with some backlash from cis women in his life. So that's that's just a question that I wondered. It wasn't about the, the stream, it was more about the video. Hope so. Uh, Brother Jamie. You know. Yeah, I was gonna I wanted to kind of respond to um kind of Hope's comment because I agree with you. There are spaces or places that we so this is what I mean, I'm I'm putting myself out so like fully. So I just want to kind of 
I, I think I've struggled historically because it, it can often feel like a very, and I don't want to at all, I want to preface this by saying, I'm not saying that this experience is alone to me, but what I'm saying is it can seem, what I've experienced particularly, um, because when I recognized for me that my love was beyond the kind of feelings of kind of gender polarization, it wasn't then you know I recognized I was taking a very interesting space and place in society. And so my gay friends don't get it. It's just kind of like, what? Like I don't even see, you know, your attraction or your interest or your love or your for trans women. And I, you know, I I want to say this, but I don't, I'm gonna say it and I wanna, you know, I want to figure out how to say it the right way. Cause I'm not trying to say that I'm like colorblind, like when white folks say I don't see color. But for me, when talking to my folks, it's always been like the, I recognize the experience, or I'm trying to learn the experience of our trans sisters, but that was not what centered my connection. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh, this is a trans black woman. I'm attracted to a trans black woman. It was, I made connections with people, I made a woman and she was trans and like, I wanted to kind of see where that went. I didn't think about the the other aspects, but my gay friends was like, "That's I don't understand that." And then my my hetero friends was like, "Where like what's where are you? What are you doing?" And so it felt very lonely a lot of times. It feels very lonely a lot of times to figure out where my voice is impactful and where I have community. Do I feel a full part of the trans amorous community? Not all the times because I'm not in a relationship currently with um, a trans woman. Um, I've never been, a, I'm not closed off to it, but to my point I've talked about earlier, a lot of times for me, there's not been, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out, but there's, there's, there's been an interesting engagement to the point that, oh, he's cute, he's nice. Um, but like I said earlier, I'm not, ed, I'm not edgy. Like I'm, I'm poindexter in some folks, but I don't know what it is, but there's not. So what I've diverted to is just kind of being silent more often than I probably should be. I'm really good on the advocacy. I can talk about social justice issues. I can talk about equality. But to your point about, the reason why this came up because when you talked about like getting down to the get down, like when it's time to actually be in it, um, I'm not gonna lie and say I don't struggle with that because it's a lonely space. And I know others have been in a lonely space, but I don't often feel that I've been able to navigate or interject in that space in a way. I haven't learned that yet. And so I'm still trying to develop. That, that makes sense. So that was a whole lot to get a point, but that yeah. kind of came up for me. Um, Malouie, I'll let you comment because I want this conversation to center you all's voices uh, and then I'll piggyback. Yeah, uh, when it comes to love and relationships, I think my perspective about that specifically is, is, is much different than just the general idea of respecting and standing up for and allyship and all that stuff. But when it comes to relationships, I, I guess I'm radical thinking in the sense that like, I feel like you shouldn't be in a relationship until you know yourself indefinitely. So in the context of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, consciously or whatever, in the, in the context of this consciously example, if you're the knowing yourself metaphor would more or less be saying like, I am an advocate, I am an ally, da 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 da. I feel like the, the best way that you can you can go about approaching any conversation that it is about a group that you represent is just start kind of like uh, what uh, Jamie presented the group with like, I'm not gonna get everything right, da, 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 da. these are my stances and these are my perspectives. Because when you run into a, into a wall where someone says, when you actually have to stand up to somebody or, and, and like Hope said, it doesn't even have to be physical. Like it doesn't look like, it doesn't always have to be physical. It's just a basic question about, are you, or do you think? I think if you know the basics of yourself and you understand yourself and you're very secure in who you are, uh, then I think it's, it's very much appropriate for you to, to more or less serve as representation for, for other people. But until then, there'll always be the situation where like, uh, there'll always be this tightrope situation um so that's that's what i would say if you are going to engage in something you have to at the very least be transparent about the, the fact that you may that you don't know yourself entirely or that you may not have all of the answers and this this is what i come to this conversation with but without that i think people are under the assumption rightfully so that you know 
at you saying that you are this, this advocate or this person or whatever it is that you're going into this context as you're, you're that. And so when someone asks you questions about that and you fail to show up, then it's a question of why, like intent, like why are you even here? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why, why are you saying like you're, you're, you, you love us, but you don't act like you love us. Like there's, there's like the identifying part and it's the action part. Uh, and I think they coalesce to kind of create the identity that I think is necessary to, to be an ally or to stand up. They, it, it doesn't even have to be a, a, a social political, it, it doesn't even have to be all that. Just if you're going to be in a relationship with someone, know yourself so that when people ask questions about yourself, there's no bullshit about, you know, oh, well, you're not cowarding about, you can apply this principle to any conversation, whether, you know, you're saying you're, you're, you, you love, I love gay people, da, 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 this person does my hair, da, da, da. But then when someone says, when someone asks you tough questions about yourself, not about anything grand, nothing, you know, metaphorical about yourself and you still cow it out, because you know, oh, I might look this way by proxy of this or da 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 da. Then that is kind of like uh, that's where the dissonance comes from. And so my radical idea is that you shouldn't really be occupying those spaces uh, until you know yourself. And if you are, at least be transparent about that at the very least. I want to add, if I could just say one thing, I'd be quick because I've talked a lot, but I would just say that I think that given, and I don't, not, this is not a conversation about race, I think it's definitely an intersectionality conversation, but I think that the reality of being able to be, to wait until you know yourself to be in relationships is unrealistic. Like, I don't know, I think knowing yourself, particularly in white America as a black or a person of color or any person that is not a cisgender Christian white mm. privileged male is a lifelong journey. Um, it is a process that you're going to stay on. You're going to learn. I learn something new about myself daily, and but I've been in relationships. And so, you know, I do think it's a little bit, I think we have to be careful to tell men, particularly as transamorous men or, or men in just general, Black men in general, that don't get into relation romantic with people until you fully know yourself. Because I think there are certain, you are daily attacked with things that, that impede that journey. I do agree with you that I think being transparent um, about where you are and being being honest up front and then letting, you know, giving your partner space to be able to decide if they can deal with your shit or your lack, your gap. I, I do agree with you on that. Yeah. And that's that's it right there. Because mm -hmm. again, like people are always going to be learning about themselves, but I think principally the core of who you are and what you stand for, at least in this moment in time, based on these experiences and the knowledge that you have, I think is vital. But if you don't have that, definitely, definitely the transparency piece, because it's not only yourself, you have to be that you're considering, like you have to be mindful about who you're engaging with and who you're standing up for, who you're loving on and, or whatever. Like, I think uh, oftentimes in relationships, and this is not even like specific to trans women, but I know it's exacerbated uh, uh, for trans women and especially for black trans women, I assume that they get tired of hearing that I'm trying. Like, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, it's important that we try our best to like dig deep and to learn to seek knowledge and to do the work and to do all of that stuff and to build ourselves. But at the same time, you know, us trying sometimes can be hurtful to people. And, and the way to avoid that is to be very clear about it. any expectations that you may have about a person or for a person. Be very transparent about where you are in your journey and, uh, and, and all of that. So yes, definitely exercise in transparency if you're gonna go into these situations. I agree with that. I'm also, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, I agree with that. I, it makes me think of like, but to what Jamie was speaking on earlier, like white folks in the movement who show up in these spaces, a lot of time take up space and mm -hmm. take away the center from the voice of those who are the most oppressed and claim allyship. Whereas you have to be in the communities, working with those communities, like using, utilizing your privilege to be like, okay, I'm gonna center your voice in this instance and earning that title of ally from the people in that community. So I, I think about like in what instances folks are just showing up and kind of claiming it and maybe not even to like um, Malouie's point, not knowing fully 
what that means to be trans amorous. I think of like trans as an adjective, like there's womanhood and then there's the experience, like how, how that like shows up for the, the women and, and the community. And all I could think about as Malou was speaking was, okay, so if I'm attracted to a deaf woman, what does it mean for me to show up romantically for that deaf woman? Does it mean I now have to like learn ASL? Cool, I'm about to make those moves to like do that work, learn the language so that we can communicate and basically establish this relationship and take it to wherever it is that we go. Having that understanding of what it takes or of what it is that trans women, in particular Black trans women, go through and in what ways you can best show up so that you can engage in that relationship so that your lover, your person can thrive in that relationship and that the both of y'all are having this loving, healing relationship that is so needed in a lot of cases. Um, mm. I'm, I'm really, um, wow. The, the responses that each of you gave really, because I think that coming from trans women, it just be like, bitch, you just want me to, you know, like, and it's just like, but no, like, like I, th I think because I've had this conversation with multiple guys who I also invited to the conversation and they, they could not be here. Um, but it's just like a lot of the time guys just think like, we are trying to coax them into a relationship so that we can be the one. And it's just like, no, like genuinely, like at a certain age, everybody, well, at a, at a certain age, most people um, would like to be in a certain type of vibe. And it sucks, especially for black trans women and going even deeper into that dark skin, black trans women like myself. It sucks when you're seeing all these white girls all these Latina women, all these Asian women get, because my thing is, let's be very clear. We're not going to act like, oh, there are not examples of loving relationships of trans amorous men in other cultures with other women. But when we're talking about the way that that shows up for Black trans women, and specifically the way that it shows up for darker skinned Black trans women, you don't see it, but we hear about it all the time. And to add on top of that, of their partners being black men. Right, because usually the girls have to settle. I had a very disturbing, not disturbing, but some of the points that she made, and I can't, I don't wanna say her name because I don't want it to be a thing, even though we had a very respectful conversation. But I had a somewhat disturbing conversation with one of my sisters last night who skated around the idea of just saying like, I don't fuck with black men. And it was one of those things where I knew what she was trying to say and I knew why she was saying it. And I also knew where it was coming from. But to me, I was like, that's some weak ass shit. But then when I sat back and I, I really thought about not journaled on it, I was like, but I, I get where she coming from because there's a bunch of black men that are saying all of this great inspirational shit. But then when it's like, okay, so let's do this. It's like, well, no, because like, I mean, there's just work that, I, and like you said, Malui, it comes to a point in time where it's just like, when is the work going to be like in action or in tan? Like, and I think Lex for, I think to answer one, to, I think to answer your, your basic question, it's just like, I think that trans women want the oven to be with them. Like a lot of y'all want to make the food, prepare the food, bake the cake and all that shit and, and do it by yourself. But then come mm -hmm. to it. It's like, to me, I feel like the counter to that argument is how are you ready to do this? Or how, how, do, how are you doing this in practice and in theory by yourself without us? Like, how are you learning to love us without actually learning to love us? And be like being a friend from afar or being somebody that is, adjacent to does not help you actually learn what it is like because the experience is something completely different than the words and the actions. I can read a book today about neuro, neurosurgery. That does not mean that I'm going to be qualified to go into somebody's ER tomorrow and perform it. I can be able to write the dopest paper. I can give you the most um, I mean, just eloquent speech about it because I've done my research. But until I've actually been in an ER, until I've picked up that scalpel, until I've had five different people sweating behind me, until I have a mother outside of that room who's depending on me to bring their child back safely, I don't know what it is. And I think that for a lot of us trans women, we're sick and tired of, of the 
oh, like, you know, it just takes a minute. I got to get myself together or like I should be able to do this without doing that because it's like, yeah, you should be able to do it, but none of, nobody's doing it. And I think I, I can't remember which one of y'all said it, but if you are so adamantly claiming to Malui, if you are adamantly claiming to be this thing, then there's an expectation that you are acting on it and not just saying it. And when you don't show up in that way, it makes people upset because they're just like, okay, so why are you, why are you here? Like, why, why are you here? Why are you having, and I I had this conversation with another man on Sunday and that was his stance as well. He was just like, you know, because there's going to be an expectation when you start to put yourself in this space and you start to perform, because I think that no matter what you know, the topic is once you start to speak on those, when, when you become, when you come out as an, uh, an advocate for black lives, when you come out for an, as an advocate for feminism, when you come out as an advocate for trans people, there's an expectation that people want to see you in the paint. People want to see you on the front lines at the marches. Like it can't just be something that happens in theory. People like eventually conscious leaves little stuff is going to die down because people are going to be like, okay, so you're talking all of this, but where you at? Did you go to the march? Did you like, it's coming. It hasn't come yet because people are are caught up in the hype of him right now, but there's going to come a point where people are going to be like, okay, so where did you go to the white house? Did you, did you argue these on the Senate floor? Cause you are, you're, you're qualified to do so. So why are you not, why are you not taking your advocacy to the next level? There's going to be an expectation. And I think that with a lot of the trans amorous men that are making these, um, broad statements there's going there's an expectation now it's like okay we done listening to you talk about it like where your girl at like where like where's she at because we want to be able to low-key pick her brain too like i mean is he really sweet is he really nice does he really do all of that stuff that he be talking about online sis like let us know you know like because it's 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 not just a messy thing the girls just want to be like girl i wish you saw that they just came back from so-and-so. I wish I had a nigga take me on a vacation like that, girl. You know, because it, the, it's sad, but the girls, no matter how beautiful we are, we're still living in a world where it is foreign for a man to take you on a trip. It's foreign for a man to seriously be considering marrying you. It's, it's, those things are, are very foreign. And I'm not talking about like, oh, we went down to the courthouse. I'm talking about literally like you get the same the, the beautiful wedding photos the, the all of that like all of that stuff that women want that we have to pretend like we don't want because when we say that we want it niggas be scared and be like oh I'm not. Like, you know and it's just like <laughs> totally 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 Man. that's that's wonderful that you actually said that because that kind of like speaks to speaks to the point of like okay you said trans women want to see this already done with them they want the, it to be done with them they want it to be like they want guys to be ready but I, I guess my question was more um how do guys get ready if the if the stance is kind of don't talk until you're ready it almost seems as though if the goal is to have marriage and all these beautiful things that is kind of like the last step the last rung on a very very tall ladder and it's almost like how do we kick off the conversation to get these guys that want to be ready that are not how do we get them to be to be able to see themselves reflected or whatever the fuck it takes for them to feel ready when the conversation is not always it's not always as accepted if you're not 100% already in a space where it's like you figured everything out because it's almost like it, I, I feel like it would be very awesome for guys to be able to see somebody figuring it out out loud um i think that that would be something that is insanely helpful to a lot of guys because it would almost be like a guy who's at um step 10 and you see somebody who's married and it's like okay that's like let's say that's step 100 for the sake of easy math um that is very far from one so it almost seems like how the fuck do i ever attain that I ain't even talked to my homies yet. How am I telling my mama? How am I telling this and that? It's almost like you're so far away from where this guy, it's almost like watching a master at anything and you're just starting out on the first day. And it's like, okay, you can be Muhammad Ali one day and I'm stepping into the boxing, the boxing ring the first day. It is possible, but I think that it really helps for those guys to be able to train with people who also started two weeks ago and who started two months ago 
who also don't completely have it all together. I don't know. I just feel like um, there needs to be a beginning of this conversation before there can be a conclusive end. And I, I completely understand it to be like, yo, we want to see it. We ready for that shit. And so am I. I, I, I want to see that happening as much as y'all want to see it happening. But it almost seems like the way to build a house is to take the brick and to kind of build it as opposed to being like, where the fucking house at, nigga? You know, it's, it's almost like, let's build it. Let's find ways to get the materials to build it so that it can be built. Because right now, I hear a lot of talk about a lot of trans amorous guys, but really, are there, are, there, are there a lot of guys talking about it? It's unfortunate, but I don't think that the conversation is happening enough for it to be like, nigga, what the fuck? We tired of y'all by now. It's happening behind the scenes. But I feel like it needs to be more in the spaces where that shit is visible. And um, I don't really see it like that right now. And if I'm just not seeing them, that could be, that could be me just not having my eyes in the right places. But um, I can't think of, I couldn't count on all of my fingers enough guys. Like I couldn't count 10 guys that are openly making videos and talking about transamory if I had to go off the top of my head. And that's a problem. And I feel like there needs to be just more examples and more little ticks and little fucking one pointers here and one pointers there that can build a community of people who are being mm -hmm. open. Cause right now it's at a position where niggas is not even trying to be open. Like that is just daunting. Like coming in the fucking room is daunting. So seeing a guy that's all the way off on the goddamn Bahamas with somebody, it's almost like, that's a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people would feel like that. So it's beautiful and I, I wanna see that shit too. And I wanna be able to be in a position where I can do that as well. But I feel like there's a huge amount of utility in anybody talking as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, I would just wanna know how y'all feel about how do we start this conversation? How do we get it going more than it's going now? Um, being that it is where it is right now. Well, I just want to slightly sidebar and just talk about the, you know, the examples of men in relationships out there. Um, most of the guys that I know that are in relationships or married, none of them, it, to a lot of them, it, it, it feels like to me, a lot of them see it as like, okay, marriage, this is in game. Now I'm just going to ride off into the sunset. They, they really, um, none of the guys that I know that are married, or in relationships, they don't have that fire to get out there with a message. They don't have that fire to get out there and educate other men and bring other people up. A lot of them are just very chill guys, background like, all right, well, you know what? I got my girl, I'm doing my thing. We just gonna have our little quiet life over here. And it, that's that. That's what I'm seeing from the from the brothers that I know. And I'm, I know, well, I know quite a few guys that are in relationships or guys that are married. And it's just that's that's the overall attitude. It's a lot of the young guys that are single that have a fire in their belly to speak and yell and, and, and be heard out in this world and be seen. Um, yeah, the, the guys in relationships just aren't really, it's not their focus a lot of times. They just kind of chill out. So, but I'm sorry, you can keep going with your question, Lex. Talk about how we get the conversation started. Oh, no, that was the question. Sure, you know, my, uh, how do you know. we really get it going? <laughs> um, if, it, if it almost seems like people are tired of hearing people talk about it already, because I can't think of 10 niggas who talking about it. Um, I'm sure if I search the internet, it exists. Like you can find them, but it, they should be like sticking out in my, in my brain where it's like, boom, 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 boom. It's it not easy to for find it to be, for, yeah. it to be tire, for it to be a tiresome conversation already. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, like Hope said, I completely feel that where it's like, yo, I didn't just figure out that I'm trans. I've been living this shit forever. I am tired of like y'all trying to figure it out. And I completely get that. But just like you said, me being the empath too, and obviously me being a man, on the men's side, it's just like, we got to get a fire going to get these guys to want to talk at all. Because I talk to a lot of guys in the DMs the same way I'm sure that a lot of girls talk to a lot of guys in the DMs. Soon as you ready to be like, okay, so you want to talk about this and open it? Like, uh, hell no. Nah. So it's like, how do we get it to be a conversation that is, that is, almost people are tired of hearing then at that point i think it would be like okay right well now what the fuck is going on because we got a bunch of niggas talking about this and nothing is happening but right now it's almost like i'm still trying to figure out how we can get it and i'm asking y'all as well what do y'all feel like is the most effective ways of including the people 
that could be involved in this conversation because we all know that there's plenty of people who could be, who should be. How do we get more people to be involved in the conversation? Like, what do you think is a, an effective approach to that? You know, I'm gonna say, go ahead. So I was about to say something. I was gonna say, I think um, just for me, just a lot of it is um, be, 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 be the change that you wanna see, right? I think that that just kind of, like, it's only hard because they're, like I said, the same way that women don't see examples of it, niggas don't either. And whenever there is an example, they do what Malik did and they play victim. It's like, oh, this didn't work out for me. <laughs> what was me? And they, they run away and they hide. And so usually the conversation does ro roll back to, well, they did so-and-so dirty. And two years ago, so-and-so got exposed. And da -da 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 -da. like, and so there's all of these negative, but there's not an example of a man who stuck it out. There's not an example of a man who's just like, fuck that shit. Like, I feel like if every gay couple was still on that, like, oh, well, when they posted their picture of them and their baby, they they got trampled on. So I'm not going to post the picture of me and my husband. My, we're going to like, then the, it would still be this super, oh my God, two men with a baby, two women getting married. Like it would still be that. And I just feel like for, for me, and I, I have had this conversation with some of my sisters, but for me, a lot of what I feel is just like, I feel like some trans members men don't think that we're worth it. I feel like a lot of y'all don't think that we're worth the turmoil y'all don't feel like we're worth the explanations y'all don't feel like we're worth having to have the arguments and 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 so there's there's no example for those men to to if i was a man who was in the closet i'm not i'm i'm a, I'm a whole homo thug whatever person out here in these streets <laughs> and you know and i come and i'm looking for examples of what this looks like and i and i don't see anybody then what, what, am I, and, and even within these men who are trying to guide me to the promised land, I'm asking you where your girl at and you ain't got one. I'm asking you what you're doing and you don't, like, you don't have anything. And so to me, what that tells me is that what I'm doing is okay. And low key, all you doing is just talking about it. And so you, you know what I'm saying? Like you just, you talking about it, but low key, I don't have to talk about it. Cause I can, I'm getting the same pussy that you're getting. I'm getting the same girls that I'm getting the same girls to come and fuck with me that you fucking with. The only mm -hmm. difference is I don't have to say shit about liking them. And so there's like, are you really doing anything to elevate them? Or are you just helping them have conversations about what they're doing? Because y'all can have conversations about liking us and you can be able to speak about it but until we're having conversations about the elevation of what it means to actually love a person and want to build with a person right not just talk about your own traumas about why you couldn't but about what it is to actually enter into someone's space with the intention to get to know them for the purpose of maybe because I'm ready to do certain things, you might be the person for me because that's the intention in most of this relationships. If you really like a girl after that first date, you feeling her or whatever the case may be, there's a thought process in your mind because there's a thought process in my mind with men like, okay, let's see how long he lasts. Let's see how long he sticks around. But it just seems like with trans women, we never get past that buffering stage. It's like, you cute. I'm going to talk to you. Our vibe is cute. And then you end up vibing for years. And it's just like, at what point does it become this, I'm going to <clears throat> practice this or I'm going to see what this is about. I feel like so many guys are just afraid to end up being the, the next Malik or the next Bobby Valentino or the next whatever one of these guys <laughs> that get caught or whatever caught you know um that guys are just like you know what because I don't want to be this person as, as nice as you are I'm I, I can't do that just yet and then they get upset when the girls be like you know what well fuck you because I don't have five more years to wait oh can I I just want to say one thing I'm gonna tell you I just like I've had a, a moment of um reflection in this conversation I'm gonna tell you one thing that I feel like I've taken is that and this is probably wrong or it's not, I don't know, but it's my truth. I never really centered the sister's transness in my interaction. Like that wasn't a, that, you know, what I found for me particularly is trans women were more accepting of me holistically. Like it was, I didn't have to go through the same judgment hurdles as I went through with some cis women in the past. And so when I engaged with trans women, I felt like, okay, you kind of understand my nuancedness. I understand, but that's not how I'm, that's not where I, I don't, 
I'm not engaging you because you're a trans woman. I'm engaging you because we have a connection or at least there's a vibe or there's a possibility for us to grow in something. I think a lot of times from what I'm learning in this conversation, maybe I haven't done my work in really understanding for my approach to trans women is probably not for the black trans women is not the, you know, is not maybe what some of the sisters are accustomed to. Some of the sisters may be more accustomed to, to guys who are centering their transness first and not their connection first. That has not been something I've elevated. So I think for me, I just kind of shied away. I said, I'm not really getting a reaction. I'm not, there's not, there's no fetish here. There's no, I'm not fetishizing over this. This isn't about sex. This isn't about a hookup. This is like, I see you out. I'm attracted to you. You see me out. We talk, we vibe. I try to reach out. I try to give you DMs. I try to invite you out. It's, you know, but then I, I, I look and I observe on the lifestyle and it's like, okay, I can see probably why there's not a connection. Our lifestyle is different. You know, our lifestyle, you know, I'm not, I'm not either heavily involved in some of the scenes. I'm not involved in, I'm not a creative. I'm not, you know, and so for me, it's really understanding and listening to you is that there's a understanding that I need to have more about what's coming up before I just make assumptions about why I'm getting the response that I'm getting. There's a lot more that's kind of there. And I also don't believe, I mean, I could be wrong, but some of the comments about like brothers having to be on the forefront. I mean, I think what Chris said is beautiful. I think for a brother and a sister to be in a relationship and they go off and ride in the sunset together, that's their very right. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's like freedom. Like they don't have to like, they don't have to put their love on display to teach other folks. Like I think, and unfortunately I know with that being their approach, then other brothers won't learn. But I also think how beautiful is that for them to know that we fell in love and this is our thing. It ain't everybody's mm -hmm. thing to be a part of, but I guess then, you know, to Lex's comment then like, then how do we transform and move forward this conversation if that's happening too much on the flip side too? So I don't know, um, your question, I don't really have, Chris, so you about to- Oh, well, no, I'm gonna say, um, you know, seeing a successful, healthy relationship between a trans woman and a cis man man uh, really inspired me a lot. It gave, it inspired me, it, it gave me a lot more courage, it gave, it really, it really pushed me forward. Just seeing that example in front of me. This was not a black couple, but this was a couple nonetheless that made it work and made this thing really real and really something that it looked like I could attain it to. And they, they, they had real happiness, and that's something that I look for. But I mean, just having that example out there really does a lot. And I, I made sure just this past week we were on up on a Zoom call with a bunch of other. Trans Amherst men and all the guys were married. I'm like, guys, y'all need to know that your example matters. And I know all the young guys out here that are single, really, really, you, you inspire them. And, and I know they don't look to be role models or anything like that, but it just, it does wonders when you have that example set in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, it's necessary. But I, I think a little bit, and I just want to kind of go back to what Hope was saying about you know, friends not saying, seeing, it's not it's sounding a little bit like the, you know, ain't no good man out there kind of thing. It's the, the age old ain't no good niggas out there. And, right. and, and it feels like slightly, mm. um, there's something that I heard a while ago where it's just like, you know, and this is not a woman hating saying that, it's just some an analogy, but it's like, you know, women say there's no good men because 95% of the women are going after the top 5% of the dudes. And, 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 and the other way around for men, because I get, you know, with my podcast that I do, you know, I got a lot of guys jumping in my DMs for, for my account and, you know, they're upset and frustrated and it's the other way around where you got all the guys going after those Instagram girls, those models and women that they can't even meet in real life on, and, and, and also women that aren't 100% ready for a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. They're not mentally there yet. So I, I do think it is just parts of two communities completely missing each other. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration is happening because we're, the girls are seeing a lot of the worst of us and kind of vice versa. A lot of the trans and guys are seeing some of the worst of the, the, the trans community. When I say the worst, I mean, I mean the section of it that isn't, that aren't, you know, the women that aren't ready for relationships. That's not their goal. Their goal is probably, well, this, whatever, I'm not going to that. Um, I, I just think well, that's why, what's probably why happening. Not? Because I think that that's, a, and, but this is what I'm talking about when I say mm -hmm. I want to have a real conversation. 
because okay. <laughs> I, I mean no because yeah. that's what the girls need to hear right yeah because if if the whole what, we're, what, what I don't believe in doing is having these one-sided conversations where it's like, oh, I'm going to scold this person, but not also hold myself accountable. While I might not be a sex worker and while I've been lucky enough to not have to put myself in places where that's been my truth, a lot of my sisters have been. And because of that, a lot of them have been scarred. I mean, I've had conversations with T.S. Madison and, and Shauna Brooks and a, a lot of the other like popular women who are known for escorting or, or known for you know the things that they've had to do to survive. And they say that those industries have put them in spaces where they're just like, girl, I don't trust these niggas because I've been in the bed with a man who's just fucked me down and it gets on the phone with his wife and it's like, oh, I love you. I'm coming home. I'll bring home you, whatever, you know? And so a lot of the girls are tainted in that way. But on the flip side, it's the same thing that cis women get, which is that you can't turn a hoe into a housewife syndrome. And so you do see a lot of men that are just like, I mean... Like, you know, like I came at you a certain way because what you put out into the universe is this vibe, right? Um, and that don't make you better. But I think that that's something that trans women and trans women just need to hear because I think I, I'm one of the, the problematic ones that skates on the line of res respectability politics because while I don't necessarily like them, I know that that's how a lot of men think. I'm not wife and no hoe. I'm not bringing you home to my mama. If you online and you got an OnlyFans and 50,000 people done seen you busted open for 60,000 different niggas, then why would I claim you? I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how many followers you have or what our connection is really like. It's, it's, it is embarrassing for me as a man to then turn you into my thing, my possession or whatever. See, and that's, that's, that's why I always go back to this point of knowing who you are and, and if not that being very 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 transparent about why yeah. you're deciding to interact with someone because right. even in engaging with someone that you know you're not going to be in this long term whatever like making someone into a housewife whatever your intentions are be very clear like be that's the very least that we can do we can't we're not mind readers we can't speak or even prepare for uh what other people might be thinking or experiencing, but what we can do at the very least is um, be very transparent about what it is that we're thinking and what we're, we're coming into this context with. If you're just trying to, you know, have sex with somebody and you know that based on what you've seen of this person, be very, very transparent about that because I think a lot of the pain that cycles through the community is this learned, unlearned, unlearned, unlearned thing where people are engaging together but um, something is not communicated and then something breaks off and then they internalize that break off as I'm not worthy enough and da 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 da, da which perpetuates the cycle because, you know, of course people are acting, they're acting from their traumas and pains. And then you have a bunch of these guys who are just, just not romantically intelligent or emotionally intelligent for that matter that are more or less uh, internalizing these ideas of you know I can't make a hoe into a housewife and da 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 when I when when it all starts with the communication like taking uh, holding yourself accountable to make yourself very transparent if you're if you're going to you know idolize this concept of being a man and being a pursuer and being you know headstrong and stuff whatever if you're going to if you're going to adopt that ideal like go all the way and be very clear about who you are and what your intentions are I think that a lot of times we don't hold ourselves accountable, I, I guess as men, uh, in the sense that um, we, we play a lot of mind games, you know what I'm saying? And, and that perpetuates a lot, a lot, just yeah. feeds itself. No, I mean, I think listening to us talk in reality, I think the experiences that our trans sisters are having with us is the same experiences that, no, I mean, at the root of it, black men, and I'm not going to try to place everything on society and institutions and slay. I mean, that, that is a thing, but there's work. A lot of us have a lot of work and pain that we have to treasure doing. Sometimes we invite people into that experience selfishly when we know we've not kind of done our own work mm -hmm. or we don't even, we don't even recognize we have work until the right person comes into our lives and communicates. So we lose something or something through trauma, we recognize it. So, you know, I definitely agree that I think, you know, the reality of it is, you know, that we have to be better to understand exactly where we are when we're entering 
these relationships and these, and then also you know the hopes point earlier about like well why are you here I think that's real you know I think that that's part of this dialogue that I think that I know that I'm taking away from this that there has to be you know it's the same conversation we've had with folks about being out you know I love I think it was I don't know who said it maybe it was um, Malawi you said it somebody's talked about like calling yourself an ally when the community hasn't named you an ally or somebody said that like I thought that was a good a good point um and that's a I think a lot of us have to ask that question it's a lot easier to talk this game than it is really to think about okay am I ready and prepared to be in relationship and then to give my heart and my mind and my soul to this sister who is battling a world that breaks down and disenfranchise every part of her existence not ready to be in partnership with that and even risk my own comfort and risk my own safety and risk my own process because of that. And I think sometimes we don't, we ain't, we don't think through that process before we start these interactions. And I think that's where the damage happens a lot. Of time. No. I, 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 I totally, agree. oh, go ahead, Alfonso. It's, it's, it's a really deep question and one that doesn't get asked very often. I think about, as you were talking, Jamie, um, like just even as black men, sometimes that's something that Black men encounter with cis women, cis heteronormative women, where it's like, oh, you playing games. I want this relationship. I want this marriage. I want this life. And I'm just out here just trying to do my thing. Um, uh, like how future say, I belong to the streets kind of thing. Right. <laughs> like, no, I'm like, we are engaging to be in this relationship. And if we aren't on that same page, there's this disconnect. And with this trans experience, like, factor into the equation it adds in that fear that level of okay I'm like there's no one else here that I can point to as an example I have to be that trailblazer and by nature of being that trailblazer I'm going to be the first one to be extinguished so to speak so there's that additional fear that gets compounded on top of the fact that okay maybe I'm just not out here in, in my clear mind like I'm looking for a relationship I'm looking for a relationship with a trans woman I'm looking to love up on them in the way that is honoring and centering of them in their experience. Right. And a lot of times, specifically to your point, those questions are not being asked of ourselves. And I think kind of going back to Alexis' point a little bit, it, it has to do with like understanding well, like where you are as a man in that situation, in that instance, what it is that you're capable of doing in terms of showing up in whatever capacity, meaning if it's even it's like just, oh, there's this interpersonal conversation that me and a friend is, is having. There's a conversation that I'm having with my work buddies or at the holiday party where I show up with a trans woman. I'm going to have to encounter those situations. Am I ready to do those things? All the way up until becoming maybe even like a public you know, figure, a content creator, whatever it is, what have you, and remaining committed to that, saying yes, despite all those things that I'm going to face, knowing that those blocks are going to be up ahead, I'm still going to charge through because it's worth it to me at the end of the day. Right. Dope, dope. I mean, I completely agree with you. Um, I hear that the conversation has gone towards transamory, and that's a beautiful conversation. But I guess to bring it full circle to kind of like the conscious lead thing, do, do we feel that there is a way to have this conversation um, where you are talking about trans people as human beings, where you're talking about trans rights as human rights? where you're doing something that is a little bit more like, uh, it looks like advocacy, it looks like allyship, even if you're not calling it that yourself, or even if nobody else is calling it that, do you think that there is a way to have that conversation about trans people's lives without it being inherently, the value of it being inherently tied up in, are you dating somebody? Like is trans amory and trans advocacy, are they mutually exclusive or are they, the same thing and if you don't have one then fuck off with the other or do we feel like those things are separate like how exactly do we see the breakdown of these two things talk 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 talk, talk.